it would be a bit tricky to show you all how to do the palette though but we'll, we'll try with best see if we can zoom a bit a bit more and hopefully that works so yeah let's wait maybe another five minutes let more people join in and then we'll possibly begin All right, with light, with light. Okay, majority are saying with the light. So we'll start with the light. Again, just a bit of introduction about myself. My name is Murtaza Ahmed Maktoum. Uh, normally people know me as Dr. Mac. A lot of other of my Instagram followers, if they're watching this video, I usually teach for the Australian Dental Council exam. Uh, so I will be talking more on on that exam, if we're talking a lot about the criteria and if you're a bit confused where I'm talking about, it's more about what the exam says. So I'm not talking about or not showcasing, you know, what the clinical in a normal clinical scenario what we'll do. We'll just talk about a normal PFM, which what we do in the exam. All right. So let's begin. We're just doing tooth number two one which in, if someone's dental student watching uh, from the US, it's tooth number nine, according to the universal. In Australia, we normally used FDI. So it's tooth number two one. I think I chose this central incisor because the only thing is, this is the one in the center. So I think it'd be more accessible for everybody to watch that clearly. I think someone's requesting for me to close the messages. I think uh, you cannot close the message on Instagram live. So I cannot stop them. But the thing I can do is maybe push this a bit down so the messages don't come in the way. So if someone hasn't seen my putty video to start the PFM, we need to start making a putty. If you haven't seen it, uh, my page is ADC Help with Dr. Mac. The link is in my Instagram bio as well. If it's hard for you to find it, you can go there. It's video number one. Uh, without the putty, I think it would be really hard for you, especially when you're beginning to do a crown preparation. So always start with a putty. That I have made a descriptive video uh, on my page. So if you still haven't seen it, go watch video number one and it will make your life a lot easier. Again, if you're just beginning, I would say make sure you use the putty. 
uh, a lot after you're just getting used to it and you're more comfortable, you can do it without as well. But again, Putty is a good guide. It's always beneficial to use it. With Instagram Live, you only have, uh, say, about 40 minutes. Instagram is going to cut us off. So I would be doing it a bit, a bit a quick way today. Uh, and if Instagram cuts us off, I can just uh, start another live video. So just so usually what I prefer is try to go say about 2.3 or 2.4. So you're dead safe. Yeah, you don't need to worry that maybe I was under reduced or not. Let's see if I can zoom it a bit more here. I'm doing a lower molar or upper molar, either a canine or a central incisor. I always start with the occlusal reduction or the incisal reduction. Then I go to the buccal or labial reduction. Then I go to the palatal reduction, then the interdental, and then I merge everything together. So this is my sort of like way of doing a crown prep. I follow the occlusal, incisal, labial or buccal, lingual, palatal, interdental, proximal, and merge all together. This is my way. Again, a lot of people do proximal first, some do buccal, palatal first, occlusal in the end. It's your comfort level, as I always suggest. So if you feel that's more important, you can do that. Okay, it's all good. So first thing what I normally do, again, anytime you feel it's not clear, just send some messages and I will try my best to see, to make it a bit more clearer, okay? Again, it's a bit hard for me as well, guys, because it's Instagram live. So, you know, it's really hard for me to see if I'm prepping on it. But I'll try my level best to, you know, make sure you majority of the people can see it properly. Okay. So the first thing I do is, which are not the depth grooves. Depth grooves are more for the reduction. There's something I give just as a demarcation point. Someone who has taken my demos, they know that. So the compressor makes a lot of noise. Uh, so whenever I'm trying to speak, I'll try to close this off. Now this is more like a demarcation point because when we see the criteria, as I always explain everyone, under reduction is the worst thing you can do. So try to always be a bit over. With this satisfactory, you can say between two to three millimeters. So people try to stay at two millimeters or 2.1. I always suggest stay a bit over, try to stay safe. So usually what I prefer is try to go say about 2.3 or 2.4. So you're dead safe, yeah? You don't need to worry that maybe I was under reduced or not. Let's see if I can zoom it a bit more here. Okay, so these are not the depth groove. This is just a bit of a guideline for me as a bit of a labial sort of like guide because what I suggest and what I tell everyone is that when we take a fulcrum to do a crown prep, we take it on a hard tissue, not a soft tissue, because soft tissue is not reliable. Likewise, when we say a lot of people rely completely on the putty, I do not agree with that. The problem there is the putty can bend, and I'm not sure how good technique you have followed. So putty is never a very reliable tool. Okay, you can never be dead sure that your putty was good. So a lot of people check with the putty and they say, okay, it's two millimeters but maybe it was a bit less or a bit more. So I always suggest trying relying on the hard tissue, which is the tooth. So this demarcation point, I'm not sure if it's, if you guys can see it clearly or not, but I usually try to give it two millimeters there. So by the time I do my occlusal reduction and this demarcation is gone, that gives me an idea dead sure that, you know, I have, reduced it to two millimeters and I haven't gone under. Instead of checking from the putty, I will
2.5, my initial depth grooves has to be two millimeters. So by the time I finish polish and everything, you will end up 0 0.4 to 0 0.5 millimeters more. Okay, it depends on your handwork and stuff, but try to have a margin of 0 0.4 millimeters. Okay, so if I say that my final incisal that I like to keep it 2.3, 2.4, my initial depth grooves would be 1.9, 1.8. So by the time I finish polish everything, it will automatically be 2.3, okay? So that's a very important point, okay? Once I've done the depth grooves and I know that, you know, the incisal reduction is good, uh, you can proceed with uh, balancing it off. Another thing, if I talk about the basics, after you do so many of them, you get used to it. But in the beginning, the last video I shared on YouTube as well, it was a bit of how to finish it off. So I would suggest you all should practice this motion, intermittent motion. Cause we see as soon as you'd go this, It's hard for you to control it, but as soon as you go intermittent motion, it's a lot easier for you to control the motion, okay? So try intermittent motion, and you would see that automatically you have a better uh, hand control once you keep on doing it, okay? But again, the more you do it, the more you get comfortable, and then you can, and then a bit more straighter, more on the gingival side, okay? as I can. I can still see the screen as well. So uh, if any questions, keep throwing them and we can discuss at the end, okay? So you guys don't need to... So you guys don't need to record it, screen record and stuff. I know how the way to save it. So hopefully as soon as I finish this, give me an option. I'll save it with you and post, upload it on YouTube or Facebook. So just focus on the learning today. Try not to record and stuff because the more you try and focus on the recording and stuff, you will miss the actual crisp of it. Okay. The learning. <laughs> 